Well, happy Sunday, River Friends. Uh, I get to uh, greet you once again this week from what's becoming my, my favorite place, actually, uh, to, to give you a, a greeting, and that's from our front doorstep, uh, where I often imagine, you know, you kind of coming over for, for breakfast or coffee or, or something like that, and so it's kind of kind of nice to be out here on the, on the front step, uh, thinking of, uh, of all of you and uh, looking forward to a day when we can all be together. I wanted to uh, wish uh, all of you uh, fathers out there a uh, happy Father's Day today. And and when I uh, when I say fathers, I mean anyone for whom uh, the next generation matters. Uh, you know, you might be a, an uncle or, or a cousin or an older brother or a, a family friend. Um, whatever your relationship to uh, someone else might look like, uh, if you're if you're helping to, to to bring along the next generation you have a father's heart and this is a day for you to be celebrated I, I also think you know there are some of you uh, who are watching this now who might be parenting alone uh, there might not be a person in your life who who takes on that that title or or that role of, of, of dad uh, you don't you might not share uh, that load with with someone and, and I want to say thank you. Thank you for uh, working so hard uh, to, to do all you can uh, to, uh, to raise up the next generation and, uh, and love them as well as you do. Uh, this, this is your day too. I am uh, I'm thinking of, of a couple of uh, pieces of scripture this morning. One is, uh, you know, often we, we, we relate uh, Father's Day to, uh, to the father heart of, of our Father God, and that's, that's very appropriate. Uh, you know, Jesus in Matthew 7 uh, is talking to, to some folks, and this is my paraphrase, but, you know, he, he's, he's saying uh, to, to a crowd, you know, some of you might not be bringing home Father of the Year trophies, but uh, even, even those of you who, who are really phoning it in know that if your kid asks for food, you don't give them poison. So, you know, when we're talking about God the Father, we're really leveling up here. This is no, you know, Joe Sixpack football on Sunday dad. This is, this is someone who uh, is deeply interested in what is best for you. Uh, and like Paul says, works all things together for the good of those who love him. And so that's, that's a, a, a piece of, of uh, scripture that uh, we often uh, uh, reflect on uh, today, and, and that's, that's appropriate to do. I'm thinking today uh, about, about Genesis 17, though, uh, and the reason is because I had an experience this past week uh, that, uh, that I have only have ever had once before in my life, and that was, and, and, I, and I actually won't ever get to have again, because uh, my, uh, my second uh, and, and, um, and, and last daughter uh, this past week um, was baptized. She uh, publicly professed her faith in Jesus and, and was baptized, and uh, it was an incredible experience experience to uh, see her take that step uh, and to be able to say in her own words who Jesus is to her and and how God has shaped her and formed her and it got me thinking about Genesis 17 because that is the chapter that tells the story of God God making a covenant with Abraham who is really the spiritual father uh, for for generations and generations to, to now uh, of all of us. He's where it all began uh, when it came to um, to following uh, you know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That covenant promise was first given um, to, to Abraham. And what it, what it got me thinking was um, about what makes good fathers good fathers. And in my experience uh, I guess um, having uh, having a good father myself and having been around some some good dads uh, in my life um, you know I, I see a good father as someone who who knows when a promise is worth believing and that was Abraham Abraham heard God's promise his covenant in Genesis 17, as hard as I'm sure it was to believe, you are going to be the father of many nations. You'll bless the world for, for generations to come. Unbelievable stuff. And and yet Abraham took God at his word and stepped forward in faith. How unbelievable. And 
Yet, because of that father of faith, here we are today. This family of faith, these friends that are gathered uh, today to worship. And so, friends, my encouragement to you this morning is God is a God of promises. And from end to end in God's story, we see God making and fulfilling promises over and over and over again. And so, whether or not your uh, experience with the word Father is, is a positive one, here's what I want to, to encourage you to do. This morning you're going to hear, uh, we're going we're gonna to pray, we're going to sing, you're gonna, uh, we're going to un unpack uh, scripture together, and all throughout uh, this morning you're going to hear God's promises woven all throughout. And so, like, like Abraham set up for us as an example generations and generations ago, I want to encourage you to take God as, at his word, to believe in the promises you hear, and to step forward in faith and see what comes of it. Happy Sunday, friends. It's wonderful to worship with you today.
We're gathered in your name, we're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. Welcome again to the river. Thank you for the worship here this morning. Thanks for engaging in worship with us here this day. It is good for us to come together. Uh, speaking of coming together, uh, plans are underway to see if we can meet once in uh, July and once in August uh, as to how we might be able to gather together on a Sunday so that we can, yeah, just... Uh, uh, see each other again in 3D, as is often spoken, instead of 2D, which it would be in Zoom or Google Meets, or instead of 1D, which might be just email. So uh, we're hoping to meet together in 3D, of the Lord willing, sometime in the middle of July and sometime in the middle of uh, August. That's our plans. That's what we're hoping for uh, before perhaps we fully reopen in September. We are hard at work trying to make that happen. Um, there's also another event, a social event that is uh, being planned, and that is uh, Guess Who's Coming to Patio. And so uh, if you would, save the date for July 10. We're hoping that uh, many people will sign up uh, to actually attend this uh, a social event. It'll be hosted by some of you who sign up to be hosts. And then the rest of you will be uh, attendees. And then by surprise, we will then allocate different people to show up at different people's homes uh, for a little bit of a patio party or uh, whatever it is uh, that the host has planned. Uh, but it is all being planned so that we do this all together on July 10. So save the date. Hopefully you're not on vacation. Hopefully you can engage in this. Um, if it goes well, we'll try to do it again in August. Who knows? Um, so yeah, um, save the date and uh, look forward to seeing you on a patio nearby. So uh, a couple of other things. Uh, today is a very busy day. <laughs> it's Father's Day, so uh, happy Father's Day to each and every one of you. For those of you who um, are missing your father, our hearts go out to you. We pray that uh, our Heavenly Father comforts you at this time. Um, but today is just a, a day to recognize the role of fathers. Um, for those that have, uh, don't have a positive 
outlook on fathers. Again, we pray that uh, our Heavenly Father um, would be your father and uh, yeah, just uh, share his love with you and his, uh, his pride in you. And so uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And I pray that the children are blessing them indeed. It's also um, Indigenous uh, Sunday today. And so uh, Melissa Hillary is going to be talking to us about that. So stay tuned after these announcements for uh, what our Transforming Lives theme will have us uh, think about as far as uh, Indigenous Sunday goes. And so that would be great. Uh, I also just want to send out a shout out to all, everyone who has graduated. It's the season for graduations, whether you're graduating from kindergarten or grade six or grade nine or grade 12 or university or college, um, our hats off to you uh, for congratulations. Um, just that's awesome. We pray that you are blessed in the next chapter in your lives. And so we just uh, ask for the Lord's blessing upon you as you graduate and, and turn the page in, in the chapter of your life. And so um, hats off to all the parents and families that have rallied around you um, and supported you in your school years. So hats off. This has been a very tough year, especially if you were in, uh, it doesn't matter what educational level you're at, it was a tough year. We just got to admit that. And so hats off to everybody uh, for completing this year. Uh, just a couple of, just I just want to drop a hint that uh, in the near future, we're going to be asking for some volunteers for different ministries uh, where we can pick up the ball, whether that's, you know, hospitality and children's and women's ministries, uh, whether that's on uh, the financial side of things as well, accounting committee. Uh, there's just a, a whole variety of needs. Uh, people are being approached right now um, to be on our executive team. There are uh, letters that have gone out. And so if you've received the letter, you know who you are. Um, but if this is something that you feel called to, if this is, if, if you didn't get a letter, but you're thinking, ah, oh, this might be something I, I want I'd like to do, please just phone up, call up, email myself or anyone that's on the executive um, and we'll have a good conversation with you and then we can look forward to uh, what leadership at the river might look like in the coming year. Uh, John Elzinga and uh, Joanne Ogle will be stepping down from their three-year term. They've successfully completed that as of September they will and so we're just looking for two people to replace them. So if that's you, awesome. The Lord's hand is upon you and you know it and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you. So I think that's all I got for you right now. So uh, without further ado, let's turn it over to uh, Melissa Hillary. Thanks, and I'll see you soon. So Hearts Exchanged is a learning in action journey that's designed to help reform Christians engage with Indigenous people as neighbors and fellow image bearers. And essentially that takes place over an eight month journey where we have monthly dialogue sessions um, talking about Indigenous rights and Indigenous theology. And there are activities to complete in between, but really the, the whole purpose of this project is to begin discussions and conversations in various regions across Canada to help um, reform Christians have an understanding of how to relate to Indigenous people and Indigenous cultures in a way that's respectful and reciprocal. This is a conversation that is being picked up from a while back when um, a, a cross-cultural ministry forum took place in 2000. And, and now we are able to fully uh, live into that the need to really understand, explore um, contextualization. Um, I would say contextualization is really a part of how we share the gospel anywhere in the world, in any culture. And um, sometimes the church has done a good job of that. Sometimes the church has not done such a good job of that. And so what we're really trying to uh, reclaim and redeem in, in Canada is the ways in which we can share boldly the gospel of Christ and, and the story of God, our creator, with Indigenous communities in ways that are relevant and understandable and respectful 
of the ways that they already know uh, of Creator. I'm really excited about this because there are a lot of um, Indigenous people that are confronted with and have their own tension about being Indigenous and being Christian. It's been the narrative that we have to choose you either Indigenous or you're Christian, but you can't be both. But understanding how we even came to the place where we have to make Indigenous people choose, that is why we need to under go through hearts exchange because that was a construct that you had, um, that Indigenous people had to choose that to give up who God created them in order to be Christian. That takes a toll on your identity as an Indigenous person. Um, and it also questions God and how he created us. All of this work um, could be described as, as pre-work um, for the Canadian National Gathering, which we hope to see it as a catalyzing event and a commissioning event to carry on this conversation and take it back to uh, people's home churches and communities. So it, it doesn't just stop at, at, at the Canadian National Gathering, but it's it goes beyond that and still keeps up the work of reconciliation. We're testing out Hearts Exchange in two regions in Canada, in Alberta and Eastern Canada, to get a sense of how this works, to get feedback from uh, the participants, and we'll, we'll use all of that to actually launch the Hearts Exchange program nationwide in the fall of 2021. And at that point, we'll be looking for folks from every classes, every region in Canada who are interested. We're really looking for folks who are from CRC communities or connected to the CRC in one way or another. This is, this is focused on um, people within our denomination specifically, but we really are looking for people who are willing to step up and do that work afterwards as well and not just approach this as, as a learning journey. It's learning and practice. And it's a way to come together and a safe way to discuss questions and, and just a whole lot of understanding to why it is today and then inspiration of how we could do better. So we are hoping that as churches learn about Hearts Exchanged, as they participate in it, as they have members who are in our cohorts or learning about it in their classes, that they will uh, see it as a very valuable tool um, to increase that belonging in their churches, but also to obviously build relationships and, and redeem some of the ways in which the church and Indigenous communities have not had great relationships in the past. Hopefully um, through some of this work, CRC churches will begin to um, be places of belonging for Indigenous Christians. If you're interested, check out the link below the video. There will be more information on our website as well as a button you can click on to sign up to participate. We'd love to see you in fall 2021. Hi River, Kathy Dempsey here. I wanted to give you an update on the Stephen Ministry Program and where things stand right now. So at the end of May, I successfully finished my Stephen Leaders training and I now have a completion certificate. So yay me. <laughs> so now at the River, we can start our Stephen Ministers training. So I wanted to give you an update about that. So I think there may be a little bit of confusion or um, uh, education, I guess, around still around uh, what exactly is the Stephen Ministry Program. So I suppose uh, by definition, the Stephen Ministry is uh, a distinctive Christian caring ministry in which clergy and lay people work together to provide one-on-one -on -one care to people who are experiencing a wide range of crises or circumstances in life. So, you know, that can be anything from uh, people experiencing grief or loss or uh, life transition, maybe uh, the loss of a job or people who are um, experiencing um, empty nesting, could be loneliness, all sorts of crises or just life transitions. 
And so um, the Stephen ministers then go through uh, training um, and they go through a whole series of classes and they are taught the theology on how to do that life uh, or that caring um, um, program. And so at the end of August and into the fall, um, myself and other uh, Stephen leaders from South Edmonton would like to offer th this opportunity for people at the river to become a Stephen ministers. So if you would like more information on the Stephen Ministry Program and how to take those classes, please get in touch with me. There's two um, um, uh, inf information sessions I would like to offer you to attend. You don't have to come to both, just one would be great. Um, one of them is going to be on Saturday, June the 26th at 9 in the morning, or you could come on July the 12th in the evening, that's a Monday. Uh, 9 in the morning on Saturday the 26th or 7 p.m. on July the 12th. Um, just get in touch with me. I'm at kathy at rivercommunity.ca and I can give you the link to that uh, Zoom call and I can um, give you information about the Stephen Ministry Program and about the training opportunity for the fall. So, um, looking forward to uh, promoting Stephen Ministry at the River. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome to all the friends of the river. It's a pleasure to be with you again here today. Hi, my name is Pastor Dale and I'll be bringing the message uh, to you today. Well, I said that uh, June would be parable month, but here I am straying from the plan. I think, uh, I recognize that there is just so much going on in our lives that I felt a pressing need to talk about more current affairs. Two weeks ago or so, I, I spoke to you about the elephant in the room. <laughs> Remember? We spoke about that unnamed condition of languishing, all on account of the grief that we have been experiencing because of the losses that we have faced during the pandemic. Loss of community and connection. Loss of life and quite possibly lives. Loss of family and friends. Loss of the regular ebb and flow of our daily rhythms. We have faced a lot of loss and some of us are still languishing and lamenting over our losses and therefore we are still languishing. I say languishing because although restrictions are being lifted, we might still be floundering about vaccines. There is some uncertainty in the air about the communal will to achieve the 70% targets of first and second dose immunization goals. There is some anxiety in the air about completing the vaccine process so that we can return to some new state of normalcy. Let's talk a little bit about the obstacles that stand in our way of achieving immunization goals as set forth by regulatory bodies, be they health organizations or government institutions at any level. What are the obstacles in our collective way of achieving 70% targets? The World Health Organization uh, defines vaccine hesitancy as a delay in acceptance or refusal of safe vaccines despite availability of vaccine services. It is caused by complex context specific factors that vary across time and place and, and different vaccines and, and is influenced by issues such as complacency and convenience and confidence <laughs> and socio demographic contexts. So let's talk about those three C's, complacency, confidence, and 
convenience. Complacency refers to when you perceive the risks of COVID-19 to be low and therefore you deem that vaccination is not a necessary preventative action. <laughs> In short, you are not worried. Confidence involves your trust level in the safety and efficacy of the vaccines themselves. Wh whether you trust the health system that delivers them, and if you trust the motivations of policymakers who decide on the vaccine. In short, you do not trust the system. Vaccination convenience refers to how physically available and accessible the vaccine is. In short, you do not want to be inconvenienced to have to get the vaccine. There are other factors involved in influencing our decisions to be vaccinated or not, but this simplified list explains a lot, does it not? Uh, people are either complacent about, uh, inconvenienced by, or not confident about vaccines, and therefore are hesitant to get immunized. Much like it was helpful to name the elephant in the room about languishing, I hope it is helpful to name the reasons why people are hesitant to get the vaccine. And knowing it, and naming it, helps the anxiety in the room for why people do or do not get the vaccine. So why am I sharing all this info about COVID and vaccine anxiety? Well, two answers I have for you. The first is to introduce to you another elephant in the room that we all need to address. And the second is to share with you how I have been dealing with with this elephant in our river room. <laughs> uh, but before I do, I, I need to share a devotional with you that caused me to sit up and take notice. You know, every morning I open the YouVersion Bible app on my phone and I engage in the daily devotional that they offer. It's called The Open Story. So one morning, the key verse was from Psalm 91, which reads like this. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my strength, my God in whom I trust. Then the written devotional was penned by Nikki Gumbel of Alpha Marriage fame, if you're familiar with that course. Nikki entitled this day's devotional as Overcoming Fear. Nicky Gumbel did a great job in examining the whole psalm. He, he deciphered three sections in Psalm 91. The first section is that the author of the psalm shared his own experience. Uh, secondly, the psalmist speaks to our experiences of being fearful. And lastly, the author wrote down what the Lord wants to say to our fears. Fear. <laughs> That got me thinking about what it might be that I am fearful of and what the river might be fearful of. I'd like to start to share with you those fears with you. So let me start with what I think that we as a church might be fearful of. Over the last two years, the River Church has undergone some major transitions. We are in new territory, you might say. We are in a wilderness, and we are looking for our promised land. Just over two years ago, the founding pastor of this church, Bruce Gritter, announced his departure. In the next year that followed, there was some anxiety over what the future would look like. Um, who was going to be our next lead pastor? That was probably the biggest concern. And then COVID hit before Bruce and Sharon left, and hit us it did, and hard. The COVID challenge was a mountain to climb, a mountain we have never climbed before. Physical distancing, social isolation, hand washing, and masking became the norm. Worship gatherings became stunted by those factors, plus the restriction to singing aloud. <laughs> 
Then came complete lockdowns and the need to do pre-recorded services, which, if we are honest, are just not the same as worshiping in person all together. Am I right? Now, if that was not enough, the facilities that we had called home for the past eight plus years became untenable and we vacated the premises. Elvis did not leave the building this time. It was the building that left Elvis. And more recently, two staff persons have been released from ministry here at the river. The increased expenses that we have incurred and the loss of income created by just simply created a financial burden that was not sustainable and some cuts had to be made. And so here we are in a territory where we have never been before. How do we navigate this wilderness? Where do we find water, shelter, food sources? Who and how will ministry continue? This is the current fearful state of the River Church that we find ourselves in. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to be known as a Debbie Downer or a, a Daily Downer. I don't typically speak like Eeyore. But again, it is helpful to name the source of our fears and anxiety. As for me, I too have been affected by fear and anxiety over these river situations. Maybe even a little bit more affected than perhaps I let on. <laughs> you might say, this is not what I signed up for when I arrived about six months ago. I left a thriving and vibrant church in Ontario with a full complement of staff and volunteers. We also had an, an exceptionally fine facility that generated income as well for the church. I did not expect to find myself here. And if I can be honest with you, I have found myself mourning the losses that I have incurred. There have been days when I have asked myself the question, what was I thinking? That is precisely where Psalm 91 devotional was a godsend for me. Here, let us read the rest of Psalm 91. Let us start with verse 1 again and remember the three sections. Okay, so if you have a Bible open in front of you, I invite you to open the Bible that is in your app uh, or the Bible that is in your lap and follow along. Psalm 91, and it reads like this. The psalmist first testifies. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. The psalmist now testifies to us, saying, Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, a ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. And now the Lord speaks to us, and I've pluralized these verses. Because they love me, says the Lord, I will rescue them. I will protect them, for they acknowledge my name. They will call on me, 
and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will deliver them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Thus far, the reading of God's word. And all God's people said, Amen. There's a lot of comfort and confidence to be found in this psalm. There is a lot of encouragement, both from the psalmist and from God, uh, to be got in this psalm. Now, I like what Nicky Gumbel had to say about each of the three sections that he named in there. In verses 1 and 2, Nicky points out that God is given four different names. He is the Most High, meaning He is the one in control. He is the Almighty, meaning He is the most powerful. He is named the Lord, meaning He is sovereign over all. He is named my God by the psalmist, displaying the personal nature of God, showcasing the fact that despite being the Most High, the Almighty, and the Lord, God is in relationship with His people. Moving on to verses 3 to 14, the psalmist speaks about God's protection of his people. He likens God to a bird that shelters her brood beneath her wings. That's verse 4. Uh, the psalmist describes God as a shield and a rampart, also in verse 4. Both the shield and the rampart are military words that invoke God as our strong defender. These verses speak time and time again about God's provision for those who are in fear. God will save us from the fouler snare, from deadly pestilence. We need not fear the terror of our nights, the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that stalks us, nor the plague, be that COVID-19 or not, that destroys. I do not know if you like watching horror movies, but imagine being able to watch a horror film without flinching or, or shielding your eyes because you know that God is with you. God promises protection from ultimate harm, even miraculous protection. If we say that the Lord is our refuge, if we make Him our dwelling place, then no harm will overtake us. Verse 13 depicts how we will be able to walk above our fears and enemies. And I am and was encouraged by the psalmist's testimony to call upon the Lord. And then the Lord God himself, the Almighty, the Most High, he speaks to us directly. Verses 14 to 16. And I encourage us to heed these words as we face our wilderness, as we face our fears, as we embrace the mystery that is before us. God is saying to each and every one of us, because you love me, I will rescue you. I will protect you because you acknowledge my name. You can call on me and I will answer. I will deliver you and honor you. With long life, I will satisfy you and show you my salvation. I hope and pray that you are encouraged as I was in the reading of Psalm 91 and Nikki Gumbel's devotional. So where are we then? Where do we go from here? <laughs> Good questions. I'm reminded of the Israelites in the wilderness after leaving Egypt. You know, Exodus 16 tells us how the Israelites grumbled and they complained against Moses and against Aaron. In essence, they were saying, if only we had not left Egypt, for there we had food and water and shelter. And I imagine all the people of the river wondering the same thing. So what next then? Where do we go from here? 
The answer that I would like to remind you of is something that I spoke about earlier, about a month or so ago. It was helpful for me to remember these three Ps. I hope it will help to reorientate all of us to the journey that we have yet ahead of us. The first is that we are God's people. We belong to him. Psalm 91 reminds us of that. We love him. He loves us. We love him because he first loved us. This is our identity. We, the river, are his children. We are in the family of God. We are brothers and sisters to Jesus Christ and therefore to each other. We are first and foremost the people of God. Let us not forget that. Secondly, we find our purpose in him. It is God's mission that we are on. God's mission to not condemn the world, but to save the world through his son. That is our reason for being. God has invited us to join him in his mission to the world. This is our reason for being children of God, sisters and brothers, one in the family of God. This purpose is what drives all of our ministry efforts. God's purposes are the reason we help others to be ignited in faith. We teach and we preach. It's why we have classes and prayer sessions, so that others may know and be known by God. God's purposes are why we love people. We accept others with the radical love of God so that all may join in the family. We reach out to others so that they too may love and be loved. And it is for God's purposes that we seek to aid in the transformation of lives. It's why we engage in social justice activity. It's why we reach out with a helping hand as we walk hand in hand with others, th that we might learn from them as they also might learn from us. God's purposes are why we acknowledge Indigenous Day and Refugee Sunday and all the other social justice aspects we engage in. It's why we stand with all those who are oppressed and or persecuted, because God transformed our lives we seek to help others to be transformed by God also. These are God's purposes that we engage in, igniting faith, loving people, and transforming lives, all undergirded by stewarding the resources. All this despite being in a wilderness. Or maybe because we are in a wilderness ourselves, we are more sensitive to the plight of others. So yes, we are in new territory, but God's identity and God's purposes are no different. They are steadfast, just like he himself is. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen? Can I hear an amen? Which leaves us with the place, the third P. Where we do ministry is also dependent upon God's provision. We are his people wherever we go. We carry out his purposes wherever we are. <laughs> so where are we? We are exactly where God wants us to be in a virtual wilderness. We are in new territory. But that does not change who we are or why we are. We are dependent upon God for his provision and his protection. We are dependent upon God for his assurance and his direction. You and I, together, we are encouraged this day to claim our love for God, to profess his name, and he will rescue and deliver us. Where are we? We are exactly where God wants us. We are the River Community Church. So I invite you to join with me in professing your faith in that God, our God, and I ask that you join me in repeating the Apostles' Creed as one way that we can name and claim his love. So please, would you join together in word and in heart as we profess our faith 
in God altogether than saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, gracious Lord, Jesus, Holy Spirit, the Most High, the Almighty, <laughs> our God, we call upon your name in the midst of our fears, in the midst of our uncertainty, in the midst of our anxiety. We call upon you. We profess your name. So, Lord, be quick to hear, be quick to act, and would you save us? Would you show us your salvation? Would you lead us to our promised land? Would you give us patience to wait until that exact day when it all comes together? Would you give us endurance as we trudge through our wilderness? But would we know full well that you are indeed with us and for us? Give us your assurance. Give us your direction, we pray. We pray this in the name of you, our almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, who is Emmanuel, God, with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Search the world, it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures that fade are never enough. But then you came along, put me back together. No. 
We have come to the end of our service. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for gathering here this day. Um, and before you scatter, uh, we just wish to bless you, to bless you on your way. But what a full service this has been. What with uh, Indigenous Sunday recognition, a note of Refugee Sunday coming up, uh, a note of Father's Day, oh, the so full, and then the fears perhaps, just naming that other elephant in the room and, 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 and calling upon the name of the Lord our God, both in song and in prayers and in hearing his word for us today, just what a full service this has been. So thank you, thank you for joining us. So before you scatter, I'd just like to place uh, the name of the Lord upon you as he destined right from the very get-go as the Israelites gathered there in the wilderness uh, as the priests then were charged with placing the name of God upon the people. Uh, I wish to speak that blessing to you here this day. So if you are akin to opening and holding your hands out to receive this blessing, that would be great. Uh, however you seek to receive this blessing from the Lord our God. Um, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. He is gracious to you. The Lord lifts up his spirit within you and gives you peace. Go in his name. Go in his peace, knowing that he overcomes your fear. Until next week then, bye-bye.